15 million Americans are classified as morbidly obese. This is a national health crisis that we're in. We are going to continue to see this problem grow. One, two, three. An incredible two million of them now weigh over 40 stone. Most of them are not mobile. They stay in a back bedroom. They cut them out of their house. With obesity causing 400,000 fatalities a year, America's literally eating itself to death. One, two, three. three. Right. Renee Williams hopes her story might change those statistics. At a massive 64 stone, she is the world's heaviest woman. Wow, that's the biggest one I've ever mm -hmm. seen. I just need help. All I'm asking for is a chance. After years of seeking help, Renee is about to receive the surgery she hopes will save her life. And I used to be scared of not waking up one day, you know, not knowing what was going to happen to my daughters. I'm doing something now that I'm hoping will change all of that. The operation could kill her, but if successful, Renee will lose 50 stone. I understand that my risk is 100% that I am not going to make it if I don't have the surgery. We would like to see her walking again, and she'll help take care of us, hopefully. For Renee's daughters, this is the last chance of getting their mom back. I don't have my mom with me right now. It scares me just a little bit. Good practice, but you can hear it. We're rolling? I'm rolling. OK, I'm rolling. cameras. This is the story of a mother's dream of being able to care for her daughters again and regain control of her life. Renee hopes that by making her story public, she will inspire other massively overweight people to seek help too. Speed. Yep. Okay, Renee, um, tell me a little bit about your history. Uh, well, my name is Altavis Renee Williams. I go by Renee. I'm 29 years old. I've lived in Austin, Texas my whole life. Okay, let's start with the list of misconceptions um, for overweight or obese people. Um, that you smell, that is not true. That you eat a lot, that you eat all the time. That is just so not true. I mean, there are times when I have to force myself to eat something because I know it's been a while since I've eaten something and I need to. I'm, I'm not the average overweight person. I never have been. My stomach's always been flat. Even though my sides are out here, this is below my waist. Um, I guess closer to my hip area. My waist is actually in here. It's really small compared to my weight. Renee has been bedbound for four what? years. I have to be helped with everything. Anything you can think of. I mean, I can brush my own teeth, comb my hair. I have to have everything brought to me, though. Um, but I can do those, you know, things like that, put my makeup on. And well, a lot of people that are usually this weight cannot move around at all. I can touch my toes. I can sit up unassisted. I just, uh, just using the features on the bed, and I don't need any back support. Okay, so I can, you know, I can sit up. I don't have it positioned all the way right, but I used to be able to totally turn over in my bed. I don't know, I can't turn over anymore now. My skin has become so fragile. When I move my legs too much, if I lift them up too high, I feel it rip open um, in the creased areas. Weighing nearly half a ton and lying in bed 24 hours a day takes its toll. Around this side, this is where I have the um, areas that actually weep fluid. I've never seen them myself. I just know they're there. They feel horrible. I've accidentally touched them a couple of times and 
my kids try to take pictures of it and try to, you know, so I can see, and I, I will not look at it. Renee has two daughters, right eight-year-old Mariah and 13-year-old Marina. My mom, like, makes me laugh a lot. She's like my big sister. My family has told me we ate because we felt bad. We ate because we thought we were ugly, you know, or something like that. I don't really know why my mom ate. I mean, they told me this, this has been going on since she was a child, hiding food in her closet. I've always been overweight um, as far back as I can remember. I think maybe her self-esteem was down. I don't know where that came from. I don't know what was going on with her psychologically, for sure. She really did want to eat all the time because she didn't feel full. By the time she was 25, no one knew how much Renee weighed. Finding out was a major ordeal. The doctor that I was seeing wanted a weight. He says, have you ever heard of like the, the underground scales that they use at recycling plants and things like that? And I, I had, you know, I used to recycle cans, so I was like, yeah. I've been here for almost 10 years now. The lady that used to come down here and weigh herself uh, was one of the oddest things that we see. She was very large. I was finally able to get the courage up, and I asked my sister and my mom to go with me. The numbers are on this little display that are, that are not near the scale. So I stepped on it, but I had my sister go and cover up the numbers with her hand, one because I refused to have anybody else know what I weighed. Renee already weighed over 40 stone, but she was still mobile. Everything changed when a drunk driver crashed into her car, crushing her left leg. After her accident, she was a different person. Here she was bedridden at 26, and I think she used food to comfort a lot of that isolation, loneliness, and knowing that that was her future. Renee's weight ballooned over the next four years. Bedridden, she required round-the-clock care. In the morning, I get up and I prepare food for Renee. This is seven days a week. She was very easy to please as far as I'm concerned, you know. I always try to serve uh, dinner at night around 5 or 6 o'clock, around 6 o'clock. And she would get hungry after that. You know, she had a nice appetite. She ate everything. She, she, there's nothing that she didn't like. How her eating habits are getting worse and worse. Renee eventually tipped the scale at 64 stone. Now the world's heaviest woman, age 29. Doctors said she'd be dead by 30. One day, my heart is just gonna stop beating. It's gonna say, I'm tired of pulling this body around. That's it. Renee believes her life can be saved by a gastric bypass. She'll be the largest person ever to undergo this type of surgery. It's a high-risk procedure. In a week, she'll have the operation that could cure her or kill her. I know what the risks of me having the gastric bypass are. When compared to the risk of me not having the surgery is 100% that I am not going to make it. What's kept me going all these years has been, without a doubt, my daughters. I can't leave my daughters here for something that, that, that can be corrected, for something that can be fixed. Mariah and Marina's mum weighs 64 stone and is the heaviest woman in the world. She is soon to have an operation that has the potential to change all of their lives. You feel the same about your body no matter 
what weight you're at. You know, when I've seen myself on camera or in pictures, I just, I don't feel like I'm that person. Thank you. Bye-bye. Renee's been dealing with issues relating to her weight for her entire adult life. Another thing is having to deal with people and their reactions and their comments. I mean, you cannot miss it when someone, like let's just say Walmart, you walk in the double doors, somebody looks at you and immediately turns to their friend and just, you know, oh. and then the friend just like a, you know, two second whip around and everybody's eyes get huge, you know, it's ridiculous. The only time you ever blew out was when we were in those two. And to be honest with you, I've never had a problem, you know, with problem. dating, you know, I'm, Sometimes I have a problem with too many people knocking on the door. I'm trying to get away from them. Renee's been seeking help for her weight problem her entire adult life. At 18, she was already classified as super morbidly obese, and the odds were stacked against her recovery. Statistically, the opportunity to, to lose weight and keep it off for any significant period of time is less than 5% for somebody in the morbidly obese category. For somebody in the super morbidly obese category, such as Renee, that statistical opportunity is even lower. More and more people are turning to a $30,000 surgical solution. The gastric bypass reduces the size of the stomach. Renee decided it was her only hope. I knew way back then that I needed to have a gastric bypass. I called all over the United States. I would call everywhere to try to get help. I was willing to relocate if I had to. Ironically, Renee's excessive weight became the stumbling block for her much needed operation. She was turned away by 12 hospitals. Most hospitals, they have a cap, 500, 600 pounds. It's a big risk for the hospital. People like Renee, uh, they're in a high risk of dying because of their uh, uh, size and lack of mobility. They can have cardiovascular arrest and they can give up any moment. Given under a year to live, Renee refused to give up. I turned on the webcam on my laptop and I just started talking. I want to be a candidate for gastric bypass surgery, I believe that I am the perfect candidate. Basically, I told the doctors, you know, a little bit of my history. I also told them that I'm not the average, you know, 800 pound patient. I will not stop fighting until I get the gastric bypass because I know that is the only thing that is gonna save my life. I need help, I need to lose this weight because this is my only chance of being able to live. I have two daughters and I just wanna be here to see them graduate from high school and college and get married. I want my life back for me. I want my life back for my daughters. And something new that's been added to my list is I want to help people that are in my situation find a way out. The last ditch plea worked. Renee's appeal came to the attention of the Renaissance Hospital in Houston. The hospital specializes in gastric surgery on the super morbidly obese and is a leader in the field. Uh, that's only uh, 20 inches wide. About 20 inches wide, yes. Yeah. Sir. And the uh, patient is uh, 52, 52 inches wide. 52 inches wide, I believe. Yeah. This was the only place prepared to take a chance on Renee. Dr. Nelzarden has always been of the belief that people like Renee need this help more than anybody else out there. They've reached a point that they're not able to lose weight and their quality of life is so poor uh, that all of them, they tell me, if they don't come through the surgery, that's fine. But if it, they come to surgery, they have their life back. Dr. Nazarden has performed more than 1,000 successful gastric bypasses. However, Renee will be his heaviest ever patient by far.
I have all my faith in him. I have all my trust in him. I know he's more certain than I am um, that everything's going to be okay. After taking 12 years to find a surgeon, Renee is finally on her way to hospital. Right here. <laughs> Moving a 64 stone woman is a logistical challenge for the emergency services. Renee finds the process so traumatic, she's only left the house a few times in four years. When I did leave to go to the hospital, I'd have to call the 911. I would, they, they would in turn call the fire department. You know, it was humiliating. And you guys are on your knees, so watch your backs. Anybody hit, runs into a problem, just say stop, okay? But you're calling it, Jeff. One, two, three. The first time I saw her being transported out of the hospital, it was really shocking to me. They had this huge stretcher because my ex-wife informed me that all other times they drug her out on a tarp. I said, on a tarp? She said, yes, on the lawn on a tarp. And then you see your daughter being moved around like that. It's shocking. But then you actually see how large she is. Eight guys on each side uh, would carry me out, get me through the front door, which that was a little hard because my sides were um, extended out quite a bit. Do we, need, do we need another person outside the door? Okay. You got that? You got that? Oh, you're okay, you're okay. We just had to lift you over the threshold, Miss Williams. Okay. They would drag me out into the yard until they could make build a makeshift ramp up into the ambulance. I felt like a sideshow during the day, so I would actually wait till it got dark outside to to leave if I had to. Give me kiss. I love you, okay? Be here for Grandma. For the past four years, Renee has been unable to care for her two daughters. It's hard for me. At this age, most girls have a mom to help them out, and uh, I don't have my mom with me right now. People think it's about her just staying in a bed all day and eating, but it's not. It was um, the accident, too, that helped her get up to that weight. Before she got in the accident, she was exercising, losing weight. I miss my kids. I want my kids to be able to, you know, hug me, kiss me, you know. They can't get their arms around me, you know, so I settle for, you know, an arm or a hug around my arm or whatever. She feels so guilty about missing all of our things, our special occasions. Sometimes she even cries over it. Yeah. I used to be able to go to back to school night and see my um, older daughter in a play, you know. I, I can't do any of that anymore at all. I have to see it on video. I would like to see her and see her walking again so we could go somewhere and she'll help take care of us, hopefully. I used to be scared of not knowing what was gonna happen to my daughters and that doesn't change right now. I'm afraid of them not having their mom, but I'm doing something now that I'm hoping will change all of that. Okay, that's good, thanks a lot. Thank you all for your help. Thank you so much, man. I can never tell you what being here means to me. It's me, it's my kids. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is, she's in number three? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before the operation can take place, 
Renee must endure numerous examinations. Now, you know what I'm going to do, Ruben, is I'm going to calculate her body mass index. And that's basically a, a fat index. How tall is she? 66 in inches. Her body mass index is 113. Wow. That's the biggest one I've ever uh -huh. seen. That's the, that, that is the largest. It's 113. Yeah. Hi. Hi, I'm Dr. Lipson. Hi, Hi. how do you do? Um, I obviously uh, can see that she's uh, quite heavy and quite morbidly obese. Okay, um, have you always been about this size or or you gained it recently? No, I was, I've always been overweight. Really. What's very unusual is you see a, a person that's that heavy that does not have diabetes, that does not have high blood pressure. If you laugh or if you cough, do you urinate on yourself? But uh, I think maybe one of the things that is going for her and the reason why she doesn't have it is that she's still young. She's only 29 years old. You know, I think you're going to have a good result. I think you're going to be fine. And you have a very pretty face. You have a very, very pretty face. Next up is the man who will be performing the operation. Hey, Renee, how are you? Fine, how are you? They are treating you pretty good? Dr. Nauzardin needs Renee to understand that after surgery, she will only be able to eat tiny amounts of food at a time. Her lifelong relationship with food will change overnight. When you have a bypass, you will have a very small stomach. When you eat about three, four ounces, you're going to feel full and satisfied. And you will be able to control your appetite and you're going to lose weight. Okay? Renee will never be able to eat like she used to. She, she would, had a nice appetite and things that, that I like and I find that she liked and she really enjoyed. She liked beef steak. She didn't care much about eggs over easy. She always wanted the eggs scrambled. She ate everything. She, she, there's nothing that she didn't like. She wouldn't stop until her stomach started hurting. Now the snack food, she really loved the snack foods, and I would have to get them some way or another, you know, for her. She'd go to McDonald's and get, what, eight dollar burgers from the dollar menu, and eat all those. Oh, chocolate chip cookies. She, she loved those, she loved, well, she loved the assortment of cookies, but I think the chocolate chip was the outstanding one for her. You were so beautiful. Wow. You're beautiful inside, wow. you're beautiful. Her weight. And her body, it's a suit of armor. It's protection from the outside world. It was protection from her childhood, from bad experiences, from bad relationships. You'll be fine. Yeah. Angie Flores should know. She had the operation herself. She used to weigh over 22 stone. When I decided to have surgery five years ago, I knew it was it was a do or die situation. My health was horrible. Today, Angie is in charge of patient liaison at Renaissance. Well, I'm Angie, most of you know me. I've gone and seen most of you at the hospital. The team at Renaissance have saved the lives of many patients other hospitals would not have taken on. The support group is testament to their success. And I'm Terry. I had my surgery um, a year ago in March. I've lost 120 pounds and I feel great. This is the best I've felt as an adult. My name's Brandon. I've lost about 250 pounds. I've lost 101 and a half pounds, and I'm on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear everything. All being well, said. Renee will be sitting with these people in a year's time. You lose the craving. Patients lose the craving. That is the one good thing. It becomes a way of life. Hey, Renee, I'm Sunny. I'm the dietitian here, and I'm going to be helping you out with the diet after surgery. After a lifetime spent using food as a comforter, Renee's new diet is going to take some getting used to. So here's a list of all the good they, they kept telling her, you're eating yourself to death. I'm going to say I think she ate her emotions because she was tired, sick and tired of being stuck in that bed. But I can't really say that she, she ate because of her emotions, but that's what I'm thinking. Hey, sweetie, you remember me from the other day, Dr. McCarthy, anesthesia. Renee's 12-year right, wait is almost over. 
In 24 hours, she will become the heaviest person ever to undergo gastric bypass surgery. It's like my chance of life. This is my new beginning. Maybe that's why I have so much anxiety, because after tomorrow, there's no turning back. Of course, and I'm sure Dr. Nelson and I are going to go over this for you. You know, the worst thing that can happen is death. You realize that, you accept it, and you're good. Guadian with the woman who was trapped inside her own home for more than a year by her own weight. This is Renee. She weighs more than 850 pounds. Coming up, I'll tell you about the risky decision she made to save her own life. In a few hours, Renee Williams will have the gastric bypass she hopes will save her life. She agrees to an interview with a news network in order to inspire other super morbidly obese people to get help too. I, I've been through this for a reason. And if that reason is just to help one person, to inspire someone to not give up, that help is out there, you just, you cannot give up. Oh, why is it important that you get your independence back? Is it just for you? Is it for some other people too? Well, it's for me, but it's, I want to do it for my daughters also. They already missed out on having their mom. Long enough. Having a mum who weighs almost half a ton has had an inevitable impact on Renee's daughters. Do you worry about your own weight? Yes, a lot. I used to be actually about 30 pounds overweight. Um, I can show you, they're in the book. I used to be 30 pounds overweight and I didn't really know that I was fat, you know? Sometimes you can eat right and you're still overweight because it runs in your family. It's in the blood. Before, the child was just like her mother. You know, she was never full. She always was hungry. She would, she would cry if I didn't let her have a big bag of chips. My eating habits were terrible. I'd probably walk out of a corner store with about $10 worth of junk. Marina may have managed to get her weight under control, but she continues to be body conscious. I try to watch my weight. I don't want to go back to being overweight. But sometimes it doesn't matter what I look like to me, you know? Ready? I don't want to see my sister like this because people do make fun of her already. I want her to be... Not, I wouldn't say normal because nobody knows what normal is, but you know, just the size you're supposed to be at your age. Throughout her childhood, Marina has had to cope with the issue of her mother's size. We had to do this project at school and I had a picture of my mom and they hung it up on the wall. They hung, it's like this hero thing and I put my mom up there and I was looking at it on the wall and I heard this kid say, oh my God, look how fat that lady is and it hurt me, Just, and, but they, they don't care. Everything to them is about size and shape and stuff and your appearance. Good morning. How are you, Renee? I'm fine. You feel okay? You ready for this? All right. Yeah. I'm going to get going a few minutes and get you fixed up, huh? All right. I'm ready to go. Okay. Renee is heavily sedated after having a clotting filter placed in her main artery. Okay. Finally, the moment has arrived. Renee is ready for theatre. Hi, Smiley. How do you feel? She feels limpy. Yeah, she doesn't want to go upstairs. No, I think I don't she blame wants you. to go upstairs. Nah. Okay, we're ready to go. Gentlemen? How would things be if I was, was not overweight? It's almost impossible to explain. You've never been there, so how can you know? I mean, of course I would be independent and, and you know, taking my kids, you know, everywhere, you know, during the summer, swimming, parks, picnics, you know, 
all that kind of stuff because I did that while I was overweight. Okay, Ms. Williams, we're going to wait till the door. person that weighs more than 500 pounds, none of us in the medical field are that familiar with taking care of them. And all of our equipment, all of our chairs, the bed, they typically don't fit. Or as frankly, Renee probably was within a centimeter of not making it through the, the doors. All right, it's going to be a tight fit, so take it slow. To accommodate the patient's weight, we put two beds together. We put some plexiglass, of course, bolted down to each bed. We kind of strapped it down with some straps for extra support. I think this should be fine. It's wide enough for her. She might still come over just a bit, but I think we can work with that. As well as overcoming the practical challenges, medical complications have to be considered too. There are a number of risks. One of them, of course, is heart attacks. Another is bleeding. In some cases, we, we have seen uh, kidney failure. Even while they're asleep, these patients do not breathe very well flat because they have so much weight on their chest. You can imagine trying to breathe with several hundred pounds on your chest. Now you're trying to mechanically inflate their lungs, and it's difficult. We're going to run into some issues here, ventilation-wise, if she stays in this position. It's, it, her CO2 is climbing, and it can't get it down here. She's not relaxed. It's not the muscle relax, and it's not the relaxation. It's her weight. Renee's huge size means the operation is being performed laparoscopically. Five small holes are cut in her abdomen to allow a camera and surgical tools to be inserted. The operation itself is a technical feat, and when you talk about operating on somebody that is almost 900 pounds, that's new frontier. A patient Renee's size, actually on the inside, she's bigger too. Some of that fat's kind of in your way. You have to figure out what you can, can change in that area so you can get down to the spaces that you need to operate. We are basically trying to make room under the liver so that we can work on the upper part of the stomach. To overcome the unique challenges that super large patients present, Dr. Nazarden has developed some inspired techniques to navigate his way through surgery. Well, Dr. Nazarden has some special devices and some instruments. As you can see on the table, there's a, uh, what you call a crank crane of some sort that holds the abdomen up giving the surgeons more space in the abdomen. A little, a little lower. And try to rotate it around right here. Okay. Make sure to get it too. Did you answer down the red? Um, go to the red the Okay, sir, can you loosen the platform more and go forward? She's just really blessed to have, uh, uh, with her weight, and the doctors must be real good knowing what they're doing, specializing to be able to do that on someone that size. In the last 10 years, the amount of people turning to surgery has increased by a massive 1,400%. At the same time, the number of people who, just like Renee, already weigh too much to qualify for the operation is also growing. Latest estimates put the figure at a staggering 2 million. It's an epidemic, and it is affecting all of us. If, if somebody doesn't help these patients, they're gonna die. This is a national health crisis that we're in. If the trends continue the way they are, we're going to see that more and more of the obese population are going to get to Renee's situation. That's people weighing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds. There's got to be in the state of Texas at least a hundred that I know of. Most of them are not mobile. You can see the news, it's, it's there. You didn't even know that person until they cut them out of their house. At this point right now at 841 pounds that Renee is, it's not what she's eating. Once you've become super morbidly obese, your metabolism is out of whack. Okay. All right, hold on, don't go. OK, now push in. After push, five push. intense hours, the operation hold is completed. Push. All right, I knew you could do it. Now you can say hello. Right, OK, let me have a suit you. The operation was challenging, uh, as we expected. 
Thank you. Thank you. We had problems getting exposure at times just because of her size and the uh, massive size within her abdomen and the size of her abdominal wall, all that weight. We were able to get control of that and, and got the operation done as we had normally would. Uh, it just took a little bit longer. Can you open the eyes for me? Good. You know the operation is over. Everything went fine. Now you look beautiful and skinny. How about that? Renee, you did it, honey. Uh, Renee did very good. Uh, we just finished up and she's waking up. The surgery went okay, but it's not the whole story, you know, because of uh, post-op care is very important for her. Renee, that is here. You're all right, girl. That is here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Oh, fuck, I was run over by a two-wheeler. Hey, I felt the same way right in her head. The day after surgery, Renee is well enough to receive a visitor. Henry had a gastric bypass nine months ago and has shed 25 stone. Anybody that's three, four, five hundred pounds overweight and they can't lose it on their own, they need the surgery. And I advise them to get it because it is a life-saving surgery. Morning, Renee. Um, my name is George, I'm from the respiratory department. I'm gonna give you a breathing exercise. You know, This is very important for the first few days, you know, okay? Renee's recovery is right on track with, with a typical patient at this point. And she's feeling better now than she did last night, so that's a very good sign that uh, a lot of the early kind of problems that can happen uh, are less likely to happen. The local news network continued to report on Renee's recovery, getting her message out to the world that it's never too late to get help. She is allowing people to know that there are doctors, and not very many, that would do a surgery on a patient of that size. OK, Renee, this is the second day after surgery, OK? You're going to feel much better today. Well, Renee is doing extremely well. Um, she's moving around pretty good. Uh, all the vital signs are excellent. Okay. So everything looking good. So I want you to do the breathing exercise. Uh -huh. Okay. Four days after her operation, Renee is already shedding weight and she is recovering well. All the signs are good. Renee, her first year, she will probably lose anywhere between 100 to 200 pounds, possibly even 300 pounds. It will probably take her three to four years to get down to normal size. But after all of that's done, she is going to have to learn how to live in a new body because she's been an obese woman her whole life. Over the following two weeks, Renee continued to go from strength to strength and lost four stone. But then suddenly, something went very wrong. The night that I got the call, I had dosed off, and um, the next call I get is from the nurse saying that Renee had passed away. And so it was just unreal. Uh, suddenly, she had a, a bout chest pain and uh, shortness of breath and very soon after that um, the patient had a full cardiac arrest and due to her size and other technical problems uh, uh, we were unable to uh, bring her back. I 
I just, I just wanted to sit down and just, just sit down and die probably in a corner crying because I knew my mom was my best friend. And now that she's gone, it just hurts. Although Renee's story had a tragic outcome, her message to others to seek help had an immediate effect. Within weeks of Renee's death, something extraordinary began happening across America. Inspired by her story, other super morbidly obese people started asking to be broken out of their homes too. I would have loved for Renee to be here a few more years. You know, if that's all she had was a few more years. You know, Marina had just turned 13 on March the 1st and her mom died on March the 4th and they were looking forward to going shopping and, you know, her mom being involved in her teenage years. Yeah, I anticipated it was gonna be harder than any other day and so this morning I did four Prozac so I wouldn't be a basket case. <laughs> Although Renee died two weeks after surgery, her family wanted filming to carry on because Renee had a mission that outlived her. She told me she wanted to help people. She knew as much pain as she was in that she didn't want nobody else to be in that pain. That, that's, why, that's why she wanted to get it filmed. She wanted to show everybody, don't be like this. Renee didn't get 900 pounds overnight. It happened from when she was a child. You know, people need to understand that, you know, if you're screaming for help, you should be able to get it. She got help too late. If it would have been just a few years earlier, it would have made all the difference. She begged people to help her. She went into doctor's offices, got the door slammed in her face. When it calls upon you, I will treat you by the hand of God. That which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Renee paid the ultimate price. But her story is providing inspiration for people in a similar situation. Renee has influenced a lot of people to, to find a voice. We're going to see her death have an impact on some of those. They're, they'll become fearful of weight loss surgery, and I think other patients will be inspired not to wait until they're in such a critical situation as, as Renee was in. We're rolling towards you so we can put this uh, tarp underneath them, okay? It's After seeing right Renee's here. story on the news, 39-year-old Kenneth Brumley contacted the Renaissance Hospital. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it work. He weighed over 73 stone and had been bed-bound for three years. Beautiful. Come on now. Good job. Woo. That's it. That's, it. That's the hard part. He's now awaiting surgery. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Renee's left a legacy for the super obese and the morbidly obese. That there is hope. We have a small blanket or something, maybe, just to kind of make them comfortable. As more and more super morbidly obese people appear, Renee's story has also highlighted the problem in treating them. I think that we have to look at the crisis that we're in, and our healthcare system has to address the crisis that we're in. And as long as there is not medical treatment available to everybody who is suffering from a situation like Renee was, we are going to continue to see this problem grow. At the front line of treating the super morbidly obese epidemic, Angie and Dr. Nauzarden have never been busier. Today, Dr. Nauzarden got a phone call from um, a lady that is literally trapped in her house. She saw Renee's footage on TV and realized that Dr. Nazarden may be her only hope. As the first of the two million Americans weighing over 40 stone come out of hiding, it seems that Renee Williams may achieve her mission to help others.
This will be my first 4th of July without my mom. And she'd want us to be happy, so we're going to be happy. We're not going to brown. We're not going to be sad. We're going to be happy. I mean, she never went outside to see the fireworks. And I think she never went with us. She's still going to be watching. Makes me happier that she's not in her bed watching it on TV like she always did. She always said, I may be fat, but I am beautiful. And she, she was telling the truth. She was beautiful. I just want my life back. I want my life back for me. I want my life back for my daughters. And something new that's been added to my list is I want to help people that are in my situation find a way out.